Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me 320 Sim Pilot. and today we are taking a look at star charts standard terminal arrival route charts we've already done a video on SID standard instrument departure charts so today we're going to look at the other end and how we get our descent set up uh, and our safe arrival ready for our approach into our destination as ever I am a real world Airbus pilot but none of this is for any real world use it's just to give you some extra context on your home simulations we're going to start out with this setup and then we'll look at what the charts are trying to tell us, what they achieve and how we use them in day-to-day -day flying. Right, let's get started. So here we are in the planning tool and I've put Heathrow to Rome for Machino. I'm not going to talk about departures, we've done that already, but we will look at the approaches. By default you can see it gives us uh, arrivals direct approach automatic. Uh, and the last waypoint on our airway I think is Betton, which is miles away. So what are we going to do? Well, let's choose the approach we want. Now, weirdly, Microsoft Flight Simulator doesn't recognize half the runways um, at Fumicino, uh, so I don't know why it does this, but there we go. So let's imagine we're going to land on the ILS-34 right, not uncommon in Rome, and there you go. It gives us the arrival, but uh, oh, sorry, the approach, but the arrival is not loaded in yet. So I need to pick a waypoint to come in via, and you'll see there's loads and loads and loads and loads. Now we've chosen 3-4 right, so Microsoft automatically will give us the options for 3-4 right, which I think is a really nice uh, thing that they've added. And I'm going to do the LCAT 3 Charlie, which looks a bit like that. And there you can see it brings us all the way around. Now we're going to talk about loads of different arrivals, but the point is this brings us in from a waypoint up here called LCAP and around and in to set us up for the approach. So this magenta line is the actual final approach to the runway. This yellow line is the star, the standard terminal arrival route. There are loads of others that we could do. For example, if we were coming in via, uh, I think that's the waypoint is Zibel, um, it starts up here. It's slightly different, but ultimately gets us to the same place. It just depends where your flight plan came in from. You can see I can select loads of these. This one starts you out at Valma, and here's our standard route to get us ready for the final approach. I say final approach, what I mean is like the, uh, the basically the, the main approach phase of the, the flight. Um, there's also more traditional style ones. If I scroll through here, um, you'll find that we can find like a three Romeo LCAP. So this will be based off actual VOR as you can see, but we'll talk about the difference a bit later. So let's leave the LCAP three Romeo for three, four right in and let's go and have a look. Okay, so here we are on the flight deck. We are still climbing up to our cruise, but uh, that'll be fine. We will take a look at the charts now. Obviously a flight from London to Rome, we'd have time to do this at a more suitable moment whilst in the cruise. So let's bring up uh, our charts app now. At the moment, this is not available in the A32NX iPad, but I believe they are working on it. However, for now, what I'm going to use is the Navigraph app. So I'll just overlay that for you. So this is an external app I'm using. However, there's all sorts of ways to get your charts. You can have them on uh, different iPad apps and all sorts. Now, Navigraph uses Jeppesen format charts, um, but most charts will be giving you the same information in a very similar way you just need to know what you're looking for so if you're using a different format to the charts you'll see today don't worry there's probably the same sort of information maybe just orientated slightly differently or different colors things like that um, but it's it's trying to give you the same information they all they all describe the same procedures typically okay so here we go then we are flying towards rome from machino i've got my route in here heathrow to rome so i can press this button here and it brings up uh, the charts for Rome for Machino. Now we set up the LCAP 3 Romeo so a little bit tricky to tell which one you're looking at if you see down the side I've got an LCAP here and then you need to look for the identifier this is the LCAP 3 Alpha that's not the one I'm looking for because we're planning on landing on uh, runway 34. Here's another LCAP it's a 3 Charlie so it can take a you know a bit of time especially in an airport with so many arrival stars but you must be careful and this is the first point of the video really make sure you've got the correct chart for what you're trying to do so this is the LCAP 3 Romeo as I said before you will either be able to just draw the line yourself so find the approach that brings you out to a point that you can then use to fly the approach so I needed a, a star chart from LCAP rounds to land on 3-4. So I can see this is an LCAP arrival for runway 3-4 left or right. It does say by ATC. So this means ATC would normally cleave for this one unusually. Um, but either way, if you're on FATSIM and you're worried about using the right one, ask air traffic control. They will tell you. You have to confirm with air traffic the arrival you're going to fly. Because as we've seen, there's this LCAP. But if I look down here... Um, this is an LCAP for 0725, um, so you know you could get the wrong name and end up in the wrong place. Or uh, this is an LCAP that uh, is designed for straight into runway 16 left and right. Um, so there's just loads of variations. This one, for example, the LCAP uh, 3 Delta, you can see 
will bring us exactly round to the three, four left and right. Um, but it's a totally different arrival. So we're going to start off with, as we said, the El Cap 3 Romeo. Uh, and then we're not going to look at approach charts today, but just to prove my point, we're then going to fly the RS for runway 3, 4 right. As we can see, I'm going to pin this chart. Um, so our El Cap arrival brings us from El Cap. We follow this line all the way around. Um, I'm not sure why it's not letting me go further down. There we go, to Ratir. Uh, and that finishes at the point Ratir. And then if we click on here, we can see Ratir, and then we have a way to fly ourselves onto the approach. So that's the point of the star chart. So there you go. That's a bit of a clue of how to choose it. Choose the waypoint you're trying to arrive on, and then uh, find one that brings you up to the approach you're trying to fly. On. So what is the point of this chart? Why can't we just fly straight from El Cap, the end of our flight plan, through to the runway or to the, the final approach to the runway? Well, there's plenty of reasons we have these. This is what you will, will fly if you're flying an airliner um, in Europe. This is what well, you definitely fly one of these uh, to get yourself lined up with the runway. Almost 99%, if not more than that, 99% um, of the time. But the purpose of this is to bring us safely from our airway, our en route point, and then to get us down uh, and into a position to begin our final approach to the runway we want to land on. They serve several purposes, uh, very similar to our departure charts, they're going to safely navigate us around the terrain. So you can see there's some hills over here and so on, and the, which is shown by the, the brown on these charts, but they will navigate us safely around the terrain. They will also separate us from traffic. There's a lot of runways here and airplanes could be departing to the north. You'll notice there's minimum flight levels written here. So they serve as a purpose of uh, keeping us apart from departing traffic, traffic arriving from other directions as well. Uh, and also they keep us away from the terrain and it's a way for air traffic control to, to just sort of sequence everybody in. So there's two aspects to this uh, star chart. First and most obvious is the lateral aspect. By that I mean where it points us over the ground. It very clearly shows us at El Cap, then Bibec, and then Tango Alpha Quebec VOR, then the Charlie Mike Papa VOR, then south to Ratir. Now this is a traditional star chart. So what we're going to use to find our way around is these radio navigation aids. There's a VOR here, a VOR here, and we're going to use both of those to get us around. This is quite an unusual approach these days, or a star I should say, so quite an unusual star to have two VORs uh, so conveniently placed, um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty good. If you need help uh, on tracking VORs, I have a video on that, which I'll put a link to, um, but I highly recommend you watch that because it would just explain uh, a little bit about what we're trying to achieve here. But it doesn't matter, you don't need to know that, um, but I will just describe it briefly now. You need to track 119 inbound towards this Tango Alpha Quebec VOR, and you can see that 119 written very clearly here. You're then going to track outbound on the 097. So we go inbound on 199, that's a track of 199 towards the VOR, and then 097 away from the VOR. Otherwise, you could just swap over to this VOR and fly 097 towards it. Uh, as you can see, it also helpfully gives us the radial we'll be flying along. Radial 299 there, radial 277 there. Now again, that could be confusing if you haven't seen my tracking video. Don't worry, you can just let the aeroplane fly this in nav mode if you're starting out, but the tracking is uh, how you'd fly that in an aeroplane that's not so well equipped. We can then follow this round, you see, and then from this VOR, we make a right turn and we go south. We track 170 away from the VOR. Uh, there's a 10 mile point there, but we carry on, still on 170, and that's an important thing. You'll see that we track 170 away. There's this waypoint here, which is at 10 miles from the Charlie Mike Papa. That waypoint is there to show the difference in your vertical profile, but you'll see that there's no number on this line here. So this line is still on the 170, so you carry on on 170 out to Ratir. There is a uh, textual routing down at the bottom. So El Cap 3 Romeo intercept the Tango Alpha Quebec radial 299 inbound to Tango Alpha Quebec. Now this can be a bit confusing and the pic pictures are much easier <laughs> for me certainly to follow. It's the radial 299 that, which is the outbound line but we're flying inbound on 119. Again, don't worry too much but that's what that's referring to. So intercept that radial inbound to the Tango Alpha Quebec then take a left turn, take the radial 097 to Charlie Mike Papa then a right turn, the Charlie Mike Papa radial 170 to Ratir. And that's it. That lateral profile just sends us around VOR to VOR uh, or using the radials to, to reach these waypoints. There's a few other things we need to note about the, the lateral profile. First of all, what's this shown here? Well, this is a hold. 
Now, holds are used for IFR flying because they allow us to stay safely in the same space, same space, or the same piece of airspace, I should say. <laughs> it's a pretty good tongue twister. To stay there safely away um, from other airplanes uh, and in an organized sort of stack and you'll have aircraft flying the exact same hold but a thousand feet apart um, stacked on top of each other and then the one at the bottom so the lowest one in the hold will then leave and be taken off for the approach or you know if there's an emergency or anything else like that they'll choose that airplane so this hold is drawn here helpfully for us so if we're flying along this line here we'll reach the VOR then we'll enter the hold and we would circle around like this now, holding is not possible in the A321X at the moment, although I believe it's on the way. I do have a video on holding in the X-Plane tow list, which will be exactly how the uh, real aircraft does it and is going to be useful for those of you um, who would like to try that out in the A321X when it arrives. So, uh, yeah, check out my holding tutorial um, for that. But this is where we would sit. Now, there's a few pieces of information here. You can see max 210 knots. So this hold, we can only be at 210 knots. Now, why is that? Well, holds are typically done on a time frame. So you'd normally fly, depending on your altitude, one minute legs. So this inbound leg will be one minute. Uh, your outbound leg will be one minute. Uh, sorry, your outbound leg will be one minute. And then, um, yeah, you, you'll time it like that. So you'll turn over the VOR outbound, time for a minute, then turn back in. If you're high enough, uh, if you're above flight level 140, you do 1.5 minutes, so 1 minute 30 seconds, but um, either way. So they're based on time. The point is, if you're flying faster than the maximum holding speed, this 210 knots, um, that one minute will mean you go further. So if I was flying at 200 knots, uh, sorry, if I was flying at 300 knots and I turn downwind and time a minute, I'll end up up here somewhere. Also, my turn will be wider. I'll turn out here. Uh, so my hold will be much bigger. And that's not really the intention they want us in this piece of airspace. Why can't we just fly in circles? Well, it's not possible to fly in circles manually and stay in the same piece of airspace because with any wind, you'd get drifted off. Um, so these straight legs allow us to correct for that. But that's a whole other video. You'll also see MHA, minimum holding altitude. We can't go below 6,000 feet in this hold. Uh, so that is could be for to do with terrain or it could be to do with airspace it could be that there's airspace beneath us or departing traffic whatever the reason um, 6,000 feet is a minimum holding altitude so lots of information we've seen so far leading up to this holding point um, and this I'm going to cover the hold now because we'll see a few more this little number one if you see that one um, on Jefferson charts uh, this means there's a little box or piece of information somewhere else for you so I look at that little one and if I go over here I can find it again and this is the alternate holding so this is the hold to be used if the Tango Alpha Quebec is unserviceable. So if this VOR doesn't work, then we can use um, the Ostia VOR, which is down here. Sorry, which is down here, Ostia. Uh, and again, there's a radial out here to this point, which happens to be the uh, 317 radial. So we can just track inbound to Ostia. And then at 33 miles inbound to Ostia, we can make our left turn uh, and fly our hold so that that point becomes the d33 on this radial again don't worry too much about this this is just if that VOR is broken and these days the airbus will happily fly a hold like that even uh, even without the actual VOR being serviceable it's more than capable of, of doing it but some aircraft can't so you could actually fly this whole approach this you don't need an airbus to do this you could do this in a cessna it will be aside from the altitude problems but uh, all you need is um the ability to follow a VOR needle um, so a very basic airplane could fly this arrival you'll also notice as well um, this hold is formatted slightly differently so maybe I should save this for a holding tutorial but you'll see it says D33 D37 so this is not a time based hold this is a distance based hold so we'll turn outbound and then when we get to 37 miles from the VOR we'll turn inbound great so that's what this little box is telling us as we carry on you'll see another one here um, and then there's even another one at RAT here. Air traffic control have the option to use those. You will notice this is a clearance limit, the Tango Alpha Quebec VOR. So what does that mean? That means we can't go past it without permission from air traffic control. And there's another clearance limit here um, at the uh, Campagno, Cam Campagnano, Campagnano VOR. So we can't go past them unless air traffic let us. Hence clearance limit and clearance limit. It's unusual to see two clearance limits on an approach, but there we go. So if we get here, air traffic control says, yeah, you're clear for the LCAT 3 Romeo, and we get here and we haven't heard anything, then we would need to clarify with them that we're okay to carry on past um, this VOR 
Oh, and it's even possible you could get down this approach and you haven't spoken to Rome yet, you're still talking to the area controller. So in these cases, you have to stop here. And that does happen quite regularly. You'll find yourself heading towards a VOR in real life and you need to get a word in with their traffic control. Otherwise, as per the rules, we're going to have to enter a hold. Now, if you enter a hold and their traffic aren't expecting it, they won't be too impressed because as you can see, you're going to effectively turn straight back around uh, and point at traffic behind you. So it's not ideal unless it's part of the plan. Uh, a busy airport like Heathrow, um, they would very much expect you to enter the hold. Uh, so it, it does depend. But yeah, we can't go past this unless our traffic control tell us. Great. So clearance limit there, clearance limit there, and then Ratit isn't actually a clearance limit, but there we go. Some other things we can see here that are useful for us. Um, speed limit, 270 knots up here. As we come down this arrival, we know the holding speed limit is 210 knots. Um, but actually, the clearance if we go to the Campagnano VOR, it's 230 knots. So this you don't have to apply this 210 knots hold. That's for the holding, sorry, 210 knots speed limit. That's only if you're in the hold. If you're not flying the hold, then we can carry on uh, a little bit faster. 250 knots below, uh, sorry, 250 knots after the Tango Alpha Quebec here, and then 230 knots here, and then 200 knots here. So, um, yeah, the important difference there, and those are shown in that nice magenta on these Jefferson charts. The next thing to talk about in terms of lateral navigation is the terrain. You can see it separates us from terrain, and if I go to uh, down here, we can see the minimum safe altitude or minimum sector alpha to choose, depends on how your chart describes them. But what we have is the uh, Ostia VOR in the middle and then you have these lines which you can draw out yourself uh, but it just shows you where you're safe so we'll know that by the time we're at the uh, Campagnano VOR the MSA beneath us is 3,700 feet but weirdly as we then head down towards Ratir um, when we've made our right turn to the 170 um, we're heading down to Ratir the terrain uh, is higher and the reason it's a bit higher you can see it's a bit higher over here so the safe altitude here is 5,800 feet uh, then on the southwest side is 2,300 feet. So that's all formatted nicely. Again, different charts show it different ways. So let's talk about the vertical profile then, because that's that's going to be quite important to all of this. That's written on each leg. So here you can see flight level 190. That's not a requirement for us to be at flight level 190 unless air traffic tells us to. So you'll remember from our departure charts, we had those nice blue pieces of text to tell us exactly what altitude to be at. Here we just get this, which is the, the leg altitude where we don't want to go below 190 until um, we're past Bibek. So you can see flight level 190 for this leg, after Bibek 100, after the Tango Alpha Quebec flight level 90, uh, after D10, and this is why this waypoint is important. So it's still flight level 90 as we head on 170 radial south. And then after the D10, we can go down to 5,000 feet. So that's it, pretty much it. It just shows you the minimum leg. It may give you restrictions where you must be at or above or below. That does also happen. We'll have a look at some different charts in a second to, to try and highlight that. But there is the, uh, the vertical profile shown to us in this one. You'll notice, uh, funnily enough, the minimum holding altitude is 6,000 feet here at the Tango Alpha Quebec. But this leg, the minimum is flight level 90. So that's an interesting one, isn't it? So really, you don't want to leave this hold. You want to stay at 9-0 in this hold so you can carry on with the procedure. But air traffic control could, for example, have you at 6,000 feet and then radar vector you something similar. So that's all very well that we're at 9-0 here, but you'll notice we're down at 5,000 feet here, even though we said our safe altitude was 5,800 feet. So how is that allowed? Well, that is the purpose of these, this route. It is safe to descend below the MSA if you are following this procedure exactly. Now, if you've cut the corner, let's say you've gone from Tango Alpha Quebec and you're heading straight to Ratir, then you're no longer on the procedure and you need to find a different way to safely navigate over terrain, whether that's visually or whether it's using uh, air traffic control's minimum radar vectoring or you're being vectored by air traffic control. But you need to have a reason to be justifying that because uh, that's not the intention of this star. This arrival route keeps us safe as long as we follow it exactly and we stay on these lines. So. I'm totally safe to go down to 5,000 feet on this line, even though the safe altitude here is 5,800 because this is designed to, to let me get lower and set me up for my arrival. When flying one of these uh, stars, it is usual that you are under air traffic control. So they may modify it. They may give you different speeds to fly. They may send you direct to waypoints and they may uh, also radar vector you so they could give you headings. For example, they could take us from the Tango Alpha Quebec and instead head south down this side. This is not uncommon and it is usually a way for them to have a more direct control over the flow. Um, so it does happen. So if you're using VATSIM, don't be surprised if you get taken off the arrival. Um, usually that happens a little bit later on. 
These arrivals are not always the most efficient way to get into an airport, but they are a very safe and robust way of doing it. Part of the problem with this arrival is that we are limited because we have to fly via these radio nav aids, and that is why it is designed as it is. Now that is fine, uh, but these days we'll use our nav arrivals quite commonly, so let me bring up one of those to show you. So here we have the LCAP arrival uh, from uh, oh sorry, two, three, four, left and right, but it's the RNAV arrival. RNAV meaning area navigation. What RNAV is, is it's the ability for the aeroplane to navigate using its GPS, using its inertial reference system, so its gyroscopes, and it can work out where it is without the need to talk to certain nav aids. The magic of this is that the aeroplane will know where it is and it can therefore fly to any of these waypoints, such as Gopal, and it can just go straight there. You'll see that Gopal is not defined by a VOR um, Sometimes they are, you know, coincidentally, but you know, a lot of these waypoints, um, Julio, there, you you can see that they're just just waypoints. They're not overhead VORs. They're, they're not uh, anything. They're just a point in space, um, which is in the aircraft's database. So the aircraft can find its way to these waypoints very easily. You don't have to use GPS to do that. GPS is one way, but as I said, uh, using inertial navigation, using a DME DME system, where that's quite a clever system where basically you have lots of radio transmitters around anyway such as VORs and the airplane can then use those to fix its location by drawing lines from them in its head it's very clever stuff but there we go so this LCAP arrival you can see many similar features 270 knots there you can see the flight of all 190 here um, to this waypoint we can see the hold if we need it um, then we've got 6,000 feet down here and this comes in from the other side but what you'll notice is this this sort of pattern which you can't have using a radio nav aid not very easily anyway this is designed to allow air traffic control to sort of hold people without them having to fly in circles. Holding in a circle like this is not amazing. It, it's, you know, it's a bit inefficient, turning the airplane all the time and so on. What this means is that air traffic control can let you fly this arrival and then they'll just peel you off if they find that there's space for you. So let's say we're coming along here. We might find that we go from an access straight to Nevox and then in uh, would be one example. You can see the same features though, 5,000 feet, all these waypoints will be loaded into the FMGC um, and you see the little number there, 2, so this leg is 5,000 feet, but I can see that little 2. So if we look it up over here, number 2 is 2,500 feet by ATC, so ATC could send us lower than that if they want to. Um, but it's all a little bit confusing because that's 2,500, this one's uh, 3,500 and so on. Um, but anyway, over the water, quite a safe place to descend. And then we've got our holds available over here and so on. So that is an RNAV version um, of the arrival, and these are very common these days. So you're quite, quite, quite easy, especially in Germany and places, but as we can see here in Rome as well, to see this sort of arrival. Um, and yeah, the magic of this one is, well not the magic, the trick with these is be ready that you may, you may think you've got loads of track miles, um, but you may actually get sent straight into the approach because it's unusual to have to fly the whole thing. That's only if it's really busy. So if we look at how we would set this up in the airplane, um, it's very simple. Uh, because I loaded it into Microsoft Flight Simulator, it did it on its own. But if I um, press this and then show you, I'll go to Plan, Zoom in. I'll click Constraints up on the EFIS control so I can see what level it wants to be at. And then I'm going to scroll through here. And there's LCAP. And now, I'll just zoom out one level there. If we look on our navigation display, you can see LCAP, Bibec. And if we compare that to our chart, there it is, LCAP, Bibec. Um, it has this minus flight level 186 and so on. The, the vertical profile is not very well displayed in Microsoft Flight Simulator, although sometimes it is available. So if I just angle that there, you should see all of the... Mm, if I do that, you can just about see it all. So there we go, LCAP, Bibec, uh, Charlie Mike, Papa VOR. Um, and you can see this random point, some of the name points, this user USR point wouldn't exist in the real airplane. Um, and there's some incorrect vertical profile, but this would work. In the real airplane, this vertical profile would be lined up um, very well, and there it is. Um, you can zoom in as well to see that. And there you go. So that would be us flying that star. So if you're using Microsoft Flight Simulator, then you're just roughly checking it looks <laughs> about right. But we would check it uh, waypoint by waypoint normally in the in the real aircraft. And you can, in, if you're using the TODIS in X-Plane, that would work. If I want to change the arrival, I can select Arrival. Uh, and then I'm going to choose my ILS 34 right again. And then uh, now it says via Netan. Um, so that's an interesting one. So if we go back to, the, I'm just going to swap it over to that RNAV one. Um, but you can see here, 
that we don't want to go via Netton actually. Um, so I'm going to change that arrival to the LCAP. What's this one called? That's the LCAP 3 Delta. So if I select the LCAP 3 Delta, uh, it says via Netton. That's not correct. So this is the this is the thing. The real aircraft will do the, these vias on its own. It, it's very good at that. So I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me let me show you here. Right. So you can see that it says via Netton. But we're not going by Netton. What's our waypoint that we're going by? It's Nevux. Nevux is here. Netton will be for one of the other uh, arrivals, probably. So I'm going to select Nevux. And now I've got the artist right Nevux LCAP 3 Delta. And if I insert that, and then we look back at our navigation display, uh, I might have to do a bit of scrolling through. LCAP, there we go. And now we can see our full RNAV. Now, this has actually done quite a good job. <laughs> um, it's got the. Uh, well, slightly different altitude constraints, but uh, it has got some of the speed constraints as well, two ten knots there. So that's quite good. So the database is there. It's just there needs to be an improvement in the in the coding. But there we go, and then you can see that brings us to Nevux, and then connects us up to the approach. So that's what the via part is. So when you're loading these into the uh, FMGC, you want to make sure, as we saw there, you've got to make sure that you choose the correct runway, uh, which will always be the first thing it asks you anyway. So you correct runway. Uh, correct arrival and then just check that via just in case it's gone for the wrong one so if we go back to our original one that was the three Romeo and then you can see via net and Nevux uh, but here's rat here and we remember rat here was the point we planned to go via when using that um, if I show you uh, just to give you some context on that rat here um, is uh, this point down here so there's other points wouldn't have worked but rat it does and then we can insert it so you've got to make sure the 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 via is correct as well which would just be usually the point that's last on your star so it's the point that takes you from the star then onto your approach finally then we'll just talk about some of the uh, extra bits that are available on the chart you'll see up here at the 80s frequency you've got your airport elevation 14 feet that's important because when we're at 5,000 feet uh, let's say the airport elevation was a thousand feet up then I would only be 4,000 feet above the airport so it just gives you an extra clue as to how high you are but in this case 14 feet so we're basically 5,000 feet above the runway altitude set uh, to pascals fine uh, transition level by air traffic control so this is important um, you need the ATIS to know this uh, and it's, it's probably a video on its own um, but yeah it's 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 usually given out by a traffic control. The reason is the transition level, which is the last level where you'll be using flight levels. Below the transition level, you'll swap to Q and H and you'll fly the altitude. So when you're on these flight levels, you're just using standard as we've got uh, up here. You're just using um, standards there. But when we are lower down and we swap to the 5,000 feet, then we're going to use, oh, let's try and get that right. There we go. Then we're going to use the Q and H and we'd set that correctly according to what the weather was there. Um, so there are a few ways for you to get that in Microsoft Flight Simulator. You can use the air traffic window and uh, you can request it um, or you can uh, go to nearest airports and get the weather or what I do is you can press B uh, when you're lower down and it will automatically change the uh, Q&H. So normally on this sort of arrival when would that transition level be? Well you can actually look at the departure chart and you'll find the transition altitude which doesn't change. The transition altitude is always going to be the same on any given day so the transition altitude here is 6,000 feet the arrival star it doesn't say so you can guess that it's probably flight level 70 and below that you'd go on to Q and H um, however that's not guaranteed you know that's just a guess the other thing is if the Q and H was really low let's say it's 998 hectopascals then maybe they would increase it so it would become flight level 75 something like that so that things do change a bit with that so like I say, a video on its own so let's look at a couple of other examples here I have the Copenhagen chart so just to look at a couple of different airports this is something you may encounter so this is the Tudlo st standard terminal arrival route which goes Tudlo, Lugas and you'll see there's actually a whole load of arrivals on this um, plate so again really important you check you've got the right one that their traffic have given you because there could be lots of very similar names they are they can be incredibly confusing so really important you take the time to check it this chart has a bit of extra information on it so Tudlo, Lugas uh, and then it gives us the estimated track miles so that's uh, track miles to landing um, I don't know how useful this piece of information is because you're going to use your air traffic control vectoring and so on but there you go um, then you've got uh, the course of EOR and you'll notice these arrows 
going off into the infinite. This is a vector. So these are interesting arrivals. What this means is if you're cleared for this Tudlow arrival, they expect you, let's say we were cleared for the Tudlow 2 Alpha, then I'm expected to fly along Tudlow, Lugas, uh, Corsa. Here we have an altitude below flight level 110. So you can see in blue this time, instead of just being the leg altitude like we had earlier, this is actually a restriction. So we must be below flight level 110 um, if we're on the 2 Alpha or below 80 if we're on the 2 Delta. Uh, and then you head off on the 031 radial and you keep going. It is a vector. It goes off to infinite. <laughs> and the idea is that you head off like this and air traffic control know you're doing that and they'll vector you in. The magic of this is that air traffic control won't get caught out. You won't suddenly turn. It gives them a lot of time to maneuver you. Now, I happen to know Copenhagen is <laughs> quite an efficient airport. They would, they are very good at vectoring you in quite quickly, and they give you quite short finals anyway. But there you go. So if you were clear for the Tudlow 2 Delta, they'd expect you to head off on the 112, slightly southeast, and just keep going until they tell you otherwise. Now, you've got to be careful with terrain and other restrictions, obviously, but these do not sync up. They do not lead directly to the approach, so they are designed for air traffic control to then vector you, for example, onto your onto your ILS for two to left or something like that. Um, so yeah, so that is uh, one slight difference there. Now let's look at the chart into Heathrow. This is the Alesso One Hotel arrival into Heathrow, uh, and as you can see, same idea: Alesso, Rotno, Etvax. Again, doesn't give us leg altitudes, but it does tell us at Etvax be at flight level 180. It's got a line above and below, so that means we must be at that level there. Same for the flight level 70. Um, remember the above and below, I also talk about it in my departure chart. So uh, that is slightly different. And then uh, we have Biggin Hill, where um, we would enter the hold. Some more information on here. RNAV 5 required, you see it's an RNAV arrival, so DME slash DME or GNSS, which is GPS arrival, so you need to have some, some version of those to fly this. If we look at the chart for Venice, uh, you can see on the Albert 1 Echo, another RNAV arrival. As I said, these are very common these days. Um, but as you can see here, RNAV 1 required, slightly different, um, but this is the same sort of uh, squared routing. Um, and the difference with this one is you can see the altitude legs, so 6,000 feet, 6,000 feet, 6,000 feet, 6,000 feet. So that's the minimum you can be there, you know, to keep you safe. But you can also see these blue with a line above. So you must be below flight level 90, below 90, below 90, below 90. That's what that blue with the line above means. If the line was below, you have to be above flight level 90. So there you go. So uh, that's reminding you that 6,000 feet is the minimum, 90 is the maximum you can be as you fly along these legs. Um, but as I said, very unlikely to do all of this. Probably you will get taken in at some point to Laren and then onto the approach. So we'll do the approach uh, charts in another video. There's a lot of different charts. But as you can see, uh, for example, the RDS Zulu takes us from Laren. So that's what the arrival gets us to, the star. And then from Laren, we can make our final approach. But that is a, a topic for another day. Final chart I'd like to show you is the Madrid chart. So this is the star non-2 arrival uh, into Madrid, Lima Echo Mike Delta. You'll notice that... Um, just to warn you about the, the transition level, just it's, it's so important on these arrivals. You need to know when you want to transfer from flight level to altitude. So as you can see here, you can tell that this chart was designed for you to be on the Q&H by the time you reach orbits because it's 12,000 feet, it's 12,000, not FL120. The reason is this place, uh, Madrid, will have a very high transition level because this terrain is very high here. So you need to be on Q&H before you get near the terrain so you know how high you are above it. So after non-2, flight over 150 by Orbis, I would definitely have set Q&H, um, and then I need to be above 12,000 feet there. So above 150, non-2, above 12,000 feet here, uh, and then above 11,000 at Realco. So yeah, it takes a bit of uh, lateral thinking when you're doing it in flight simulator. In real life, you'd be told by a traffic control. If you're using VATSIM, you will be able to get the 80s if there is a controller there. Um, if we go to a departure chart, for example, at Bardi, I can see that the transition altitude is actually 13,000 feet. So then it's always 13,000 feet on departure. So the final flight level in the descent is probably flight level 140, but there's no guarantee that will change depending on the Q&H. It could be higher if, if it needs to be because the Q&H is low. Again, a whole other, a whole other video. Um, something else about this uh, approach that's interesting is the elevation. You can see here, airport elevation 1998, so that's 2,000 feet above the ground. So when we are at Rilco at 11,000 feet, we are only 9,000 feet because we take away that 2,000 feet. We're only 9,000 feet above the actual runway, just to give you some extra context. You'll notice they've also hidden a lot of different holds over here in case required. Air traffic control can occasionally, if it gets really busy, just send you to a waypoint and ask you to hold there. So hopefully that waypoint will have the hold written out for you. If it doesn't, just ask air traffic control. And that 
brings me to my final point. If you're not sure which arrival you're supposed to be flying, which level you're supposed to be at, whether you're clear to descend with the procedure or not, then you would just ask a traffic control. That's all for today's video then. I hope it's been useful for you. Quite a big topic, but obviously the approach and uh, arrival are a very important part of the flight and take a lot of careful planning and preparation. So hopefully this video can help you do that using your charts. As I said at the start of the video, do please check out the SID or departure chart tutorial, which will just guide you through uh, how you would fly uh, a standard instrument departure using these charts. And obviously the next video uh, will cover the arrival or the approach charts. So. Um, a lot to cover there and obviously very, very important. So that'll be coming in the future. So do please subscribe to the channel if you'd like to be updated on that. Otherwise, plenty more tutorials and live streams coming to this channel soon. So again, do please subscribe if you'd like to see those. Otherwise, do keep safe and well. We'll see you again in another of those uh, videos or streams soon. Thank you. Bye bye.